Hello, everybody. We're going to go ahead and get started in just a few minutes. We had quite a few people register, so I want to give them enough time to get settled. We'll start at the five minute mark. So if you'd like to grab a cup of coffee or a snack uh, or breakfast, <laughs> feel free to do so. All right, well, let's go ahead and get started. Welcome, everybody. My name is Shannon. Thanks for joining today. This is the Concord 101 session. It's usually about two to two and a half hours, uh, maybe a little bit less. The session does not have as many people as I thought it would. So depending on the questions and conversations, you might get a little bit of time back in your day. One question that I like to ask before we do go ahead and get started and you can just put that information into the chat box if you're comfortable with it, is how long have you all been working in Concord for? Just gives me a really good baseline for where folks are at. All right, some folks who are absolutely brand new, that's great. Oops, sorry about that. There we go. Brand new, excellent. This is a great place to start. And then another question that I have for you is, are any of you admins or potentially become on, uh, excuse me, or potentially plan on becoming admins yes okay excellent so one thing i'd like to call out here is that this class
class specifically is more about the functionality of Conquer and everything that it can do. But what I will do is mention admin specific functions. So if you have questions, let me know. I have a ton of resources that I can provide you that are specific to admins if you want to start learning about all of the admin functionality. Um, but I will make that distinction. So just keep that in mind. All right, well, let's go ahead and get started. So one thing that I'm sure everybody here is very familiar with is the contract to life cycle stages. So of course we have drafting the contract, getting it started, internal approval, making sure that all of the internal eyes that need to be on the document are on the document, contract negotiation. So being able to negotiate, draw up different edits with our third parties, signing the contract to execute it fully, and then, of course, storing our contracts and then reporting and analyzing on all of the contracts that we have available to us. So, of course, this is something that I'm sure all of you are doing regularly every day within your job. But what we want to start doing is thinking about them in terms of Concord, because Concord is a full CLM. So you are going to be able to take your contracts from start to finish in one single location. Some people purchase Concord because they want to take advantage of the repository functionality. They want to maybe be able to draft and share without fully realizing that it is going to do everything you need to do for the life cycle of the contract. So we're going to go through all of that today. So essentially, the agenda outside of that CLM list is going to be going through the different users and teams, folders and sharing, creating documents, collaborating internally and with our third parties, approval workflows, and then we'll close out with e-signature. Now, again, we have a pretty small group today. We have about four people. So what I'm actually gonna do is just give everybody the opportunity to talk. You do not have to, it's not a requirement. If you're more comfortable with the chat box, I certainly encourage that as well. But I like to give everybody the opportunity, especially since we have a smaller group today. Uh, the other thing I like to mention is I am from Boston, Boston born and raised. Hopefully you didn't notice that. Hopefully I have been pronouncing my R's effectively. Uh, but what that means is I talk a lot and very quickly. So jump in at any time, feel free to interrupt. I definitely encourage that collaboration. Additionally, if you have questions that you feel more comfortable putting into the chat box, it's open on a completely separate screen. So I'll see them come in as soon as you type them. All right, well, let's hop on over into Concord. And one final thing to mention is this session is being recorded. Um, I'm not going to post it anywhere or anything of that nature. I'm not going to say your names out loud, uh, but what I do like to do at the end of the session is just send a copy of the recording as well as the slide deck um, and any other materials that we discuss throughout the class. Uh, if that's something you're uncomfortable with, just let me know and I'll stop the recording right now. Excellent. All right, so one other thing I like to mention before we actually get to jump into Concord is that I am working off of an enterprise account. So I have kind of the full functionality of what Concord offers. So that's smart fields, clause libraries, not a lot of the things that we are going to discuss today, but I like to just mention that. So if you are logging into your account and you don't see these functionalities, it's nothing wrong. Your company probably just purchased a different account type that works for your organization. So we're quickly just going to go through the UI here before we dive into any of the more specific features. But one thing I like to just mention is our search bar here and what it searches through. So when we run a search on, let's say, NDA, we are looking through the titles of documents, the body of documents, and the third party field in the summary data. So that is something that we want to keep in mind as we are creating our documents, as we are filling them out. We want to make sure we have very clear naming for our titles. Because if we look here, I have about 15 different documents that are all titled NDA. 
which doesn't make for a very effective search because if I'm looking for a specific company, I'm now gonna have to search for NDA, that company, and maybe a couple of other keywords that exist within that document. So this option here, where we've filled out the type, the company, when it was signed, and the type of company that we're working with is definitely going to be something that we'll want to take into consideration moving forward. We can also filter their documents out by template, signing, review, drafts of the different stages that the document might exist in, as well as any tags that are associated with the document. Now, when you click the Concord logo, it of course just brings you back to this homepage where we can start building out new documents from scratch. We can import signed documents and we'll go through all of that functionality as well. And then when you look over to the right hand side, these are links. So they will take you to a full list of every document that is a template, every document that is in the draft stage, every document that is in review. So if you want that quick access without having to go through the process of the search, you can certainly do so by clicking these links. Your tasks, I don't have anything right now. And one other thing that I will mention as well is this is my demo account. So I clean it up pretty regularly. So when you see that I have no signatures, nothing due within the next few months, it's not gonna be very typical of your experience. It's because every Friday I come in and just kind of discard all of the demo work that I have been doing. But what you will see as you start to work more frequently in Concord is your approvals, as well as anything that you are required to sign. They will be listed right here. So as soon as you log into Concord, you really are going to be able to understand what's expected of you. These documents here are recently modified by anyone. So all of the documents that you have created or all of the documents that you have shared, been shared to, excuse me, are going to be showcased here in terms of when they were last edited. So when we look at this document here, it was edited on March 8th. It could have been by me, it could have been by another internal invitee, an external invitee, but an action has been taken on it. So if I wanted to be able to see what that action was, I could click into the document and take a look at the changes. If you want a more robust understanding of what has been happened in terms of something being recently modified, you do have access to your deadlines page. And that is going to, excuse me, your activity page. And that is going to show you what has happened, who read the documents, who was invited to the documents. It gives you a better understanding of what happened within your contracts without having to actually open them up. Now, your documents page is where all of the documents that you are a part of are going to exist. You can again filter them out here by different stages. You can also run specific filters in terms of stage, tags, who it was created by. And we're going to talk about personal folders and shared folders in just a bit. But right now, what we want to think about is this document inbox is where all of our documents are going to just be natively stored. We call it an inbox. A lot of people are a little bit confused by that term because it makes us think of, of course, email. But that's intentional. This is set up very similarly to Google, uh, Gmail, or Microsoft Outlook. And the intention here was to make people feel very comfortable when they came into Concord. So that way they could just start working within their documents without really having to learn a complex UI. Now, our deadlines. A lot of the information that you're going to be including in your contract is going to be date based. And anytime you have a date based clause or a date based duration, it's going to track that information for you and showcase it in your deadlines. So I have quite a few things coming up in March, a couple things coming up in May, and then it's tracking all the way out to the end of this year. Now, if you work in Concord more regularly, you don't clean things out as I do, you'll be able to see things extending out to 2024, 2025. Any date-based information that you keep in a contract will be available to you here. Now, we're going to come back to this information here, but what I'd like to take a look at is our settings. And if you are an admin on your account, you will be able to see company settings. And if you have any questions regarding company settings, let me know. Again, we have a lot of great resources for admins that I'm happy to share with you. 
but everyone that has a Concord account is going to have personal details. So when you select personal details, that's your name, job title, phone number, you can add a photo if you'd like. Companies that you are associated with. So if you have an enterprise account and your team decides to take advantage of subsidiary management, what that means is essentially your company is responsible for a number of companies. So if company A is the parent company, B, C, and D are the children. You as a member of your organization could be shared out to company B and D without having any hand in A or C. So it allows you to manage all of your company's legal compliant documents within one location, but keeps them very separate. And if you are shared to multiple companies, your company only has to pay for you as a user once. So very helpful for members of legal teams because they're certainly gonna to need to have a hand in every document that the company is putting forward regardless of the subsidiary, but for executive assistants or paralegals who are only a part of certain subsidiaries, being able to separate that out is gonna be very helpful. If you'll excuse me for just one moment, apologies. Sorry about that, folks. Now, custom messages is probably one of my favorite features, specifically just because I know personally I end up with about 50 different just automated emails on a regular basis. So that might come from collaboration platforms, that might come from requests from other platforms that my team uses, but we have a tendency to very easily suffer from alert fatigue. So what this essentially allows you to do is create custom messages that you can use regularly. So some of the actions that you're going to be performing in Concord are going to be requesting approvals, sending out invitations to documents. So if you send out sales agreements multiple times a day, if you send out HR agreements multiple times a day, we want to include a personal message in that agreement. Because if we don't, what's going to happen is it's going to come through with the default Concord message, which is great, don't get me wrong, but it's going to say something to the effect of, you have been invited to this document within Concord. So if you are working with a third party who has never used the CLM, not familiar with e-signature, not familiar with collaborative platforms, the CLM space is still pretty new. So they might be really confused, they might reach out to you, try to set up a call with you, which is exactly what we're trying to avoid with this collaborative platform. So what I always suggest is include a call to action, give them instructions. So if I send out NDAs regularly, I'm gonna say, here's the NDA. If you have edits, make them. If you have questions, put them in the discussion. You know, and if it's anything beyond that, feel free to give me a call. But just set them up for success with additional information here. And now, because this is a template custom message, we can send this out every time we send out an NDA. And you can have multiple. So you might have multiple for when you send approval workflows. You might have some for sales agreements, offer letters, whatever it may be. And then your third parties, your recipients, they're going to have a call to action, a much better understanding of what's expected of them. And you don't have to spend a lot of time drafting a new message every time you send one of these out. Now, preferences are really important. You are going to want to take some time to just complete this, go through it, set up what's best for you. And one of the things that I would definitely enable is this weekly deadline reminders by email. So when I went into the deadlines page on my homepage, I had quite a few documents that had deadlines coming up within the next month. So if I look at that page, excellent, I'm going to be able to identify those, of course, very quickly. But if you use Concord, maybe intermittently, you log in every couple of weeks to check on contracts, you might not be able to remember all of those very simple deadlines that you have, date-based clauses that are built into contracts. So this is going to send you an email every Sunday at 5 p.m. PST. So as soon as you log into your email on Monday, you're going to have a full list of everything coming up within the next X amount of days. The default is 180. I usually keep mine a little bit smaller simply just so I can have a email come through every Sunday. So let me actually show you what that looks like really quickly here so you can get a better idea. Here. 
There we go. So again, every Sunday, this is going to come through. And it shows all of your upcoming renewals, your end dates, any clauses that you have. So this is a really great thing to come into on Monday morning because you're going to be able to identify where you should focus your attention. If I have something coming up within the next 10 days, I'm definitely going to want to pay a little bit more attention to that than something within 77 days. And again, you can edit this at any time. The other option you have here is what sort of email notifications do you want to get? And you have two options, an individual email or a recent activity digest. So these options here are what you can get notifications in regards to. So a new invitation, new versions, approvals, messages, and signatures. Now you can decide, do I want a single email for this action if it happens from colleagues or external guests, or do I want a recent activity digest, which will combine all of the actions from this list that have happened within the last 24 hours sent in one email. So do you want a summary email essentially or a single email for a single action? If you don't want any emails, you can come in and just unclick all of these. I personally would certainly suggest at the very least keeping message posted because you're going to be using your discussion panel to stay on the same page as your customers, as your internal team members. It essentially allows you to use the discussion panel as a sounding board and keep all of your conversations in a single location, as opposed to Gchat, Slack, over the phone, maybe a quick meeting where it's impossible to keep all of that information in one location. This is gonna allow you to do that and you'll be able to become alerted if somebody adds a new message. And then lastly, we have our integrations page. So these are our native integrations. We have a lot of repository functionality. Um, social media years ago, people used to log in with these. I don't think it's used <laughs> very much anymore, but we still have it. And then you can integrate with DocuSign and Salesforce as well. Um, one thing I just wanna mention about the DocuSign integration is you do need to have an enhanced account for it to work. I'm not really sure how their pricing structure works, but I know it is a paid account. Um, additionally, Concord also has a legally binding e-signature. Um, so if you are using DocuSign solely for the e-signature purpose, you might be able to strictly rely with Concord. And one other really interesting piece of information is within the next month or two, we are also gonna have a Zapier integration. So if you wanted to be able to say, receive an alert on Slack or an email, you know, every time a specific signature had taken place or an approval was done or a contract was fully executed, you will be able to set up those zaps, which is super exciting. Any questions just here on personal preferences? We do not have a native Microsoft Office integration, but I am almost positive that there will be one with the Zapier integration, um, but natively currently we do not. Excellent, all right. So what I wanna start talking about Additionally, here is some admin based functionality. So I say that it is admin based functionality because it is organized and shared by your admins. Now, if you are not an admin, you are still going to need to be very aware of the functionality because it is going to affect everything that you do on a regular basis. So I'm going to open up my documents inbox page. And I mentioned we're going to come back to personal folders and shared folders. So your personal folder is the default location of your documents if they do not exist in a shared folder. So what is a shared folder? A shared folder is essentially going to function the same way as a filing cabinet in the office would function. 
So if I am responsible for lease agreements, every time I have a fully executed signed lease agreement, I am going to go ahead and take that lease agreement and stick it in a filing cabinet. And I'm going to lock that filing cabinet, which means currently only I have access to that document. So what I can then do is say, okay, person A and person B also need access to this document. So I'm gonna go ahead and give them a key to the document, which means, excuse me, a key to that filing cabinet. So now the three of us all have access to signed lease agreements. And as soon as person A and B have signed lease agreements, they're going to add them to the filing cabinet as well. So we're all going to have full awareness into signed lease agreements. Now, the reason that I say that it is admin operated is because your admins create the folder structure. So when I look at my shared folders, I have access to quite a few of them, and that's because I'm an admin. So admins have access to all folders, admins create folders, admins share folders. So if you are an admin, I would certainly suggest taking the admin uh, webinar just to become very comfortable with folders and such. Um, additionally, I can provide you with resources, can answer any questions you have at the end of the session. But what you might see when you log in is that you have access to no share folders, which means potentially your admins just haven't set up a folder structure yet, or potentially maybe you're shared to finance and sales agreements, because those are the two document types that are going to be under your purview. So when you are shared to a folder, folders are meant for signed agreements and templates. So when I come into this executive legal team folder, we're going to see a lot of signed agreements and templates. And you might be wondering, well, why are you seeing documents that are still capable of being edited? That is completely contradictory to what I just said. So we are able to see these documents that are still editable because I am the owner of them. So if I have a document that is still active, I can store that document in a particular folder. So right now, this is shared in my sales agreements folder, but it's not signed. So even if 10 sales team members are shared to the sales agreement folder, they will not see this document until it becomes fully executed. Why is that? Why wouldn't we just give them access as soon as it's added to the folder? The reason is because I don't necessarily want all 10 sales team members coming into this document while it's in the editing phase and making changes and coming to me with questions. I want them to have access to it once it's executed, but not while we're editing. So I'm going to store it in the sales agreement folder while I'm working on it. So that way, as soon as it's signed, it's immediately available. So when another legal team member takes a look at their folder of the sales agreements, they're going to see all of the signed documents and then anything that they're working on that also exists in that folder. Templates can also be stored in folders. And the reason for that is because anybody that is shared to the sales agreement folder can then use a sales agreement template added to the folder to create a brand new sales agreement. And then because we created that sales agreement from a template in that folder, that new version of the document is immediately stored in the folder as well. So it just makes it very easy for everything to be stored in one location and templates encourage everybody to be working off of the same document. Well, the same, excuse me, blueprint of a document, which is great for your legal team because it means they can build in all of the appropriate language, fields, terminologies that are required for compliance. And it's easier for your team members because they don't have to create a document from scratch. So it's a big win-win for everybody. Excellent. Questions just on folder use? And again, you can all jump in at any time, but I do like to just take a breather. I know I talk a lot. All right, great. So what I'd like to talk about next is users. Now, if you are an admin, you'll be inviting users. If you are not an admin, it's very important for you to understand your role within the company. Um, how many old versions can you restore? 
of a document. So if you're making edits on a document, how many times can you go back to a previous version? Unlimited. So that's actually something we'll talk about in just a few, but just to answer your question right now, and then we'll dive deeper into it a little bit later. Every time you save a document, a new version is stored and you have access to that version as long as that document exists within Concord. So if you save, if you edit and save, edit, save 50 times, you'll have access to 50 different versions of a document indefinitely. Great question. So when you are invited to Concord, you're going to be given a specific role and you can identify that role by coming into your settings and viewing your companies and seeing what role you have. So I am part of a couple of different subsidiaries and I'm an admin in both. Now your admins are going to be the individuals who assign you to a specific role. <clears throat> So if you are realizing that when you log into Concord, you don't have the functionality you need, you're gonna to wanna to reach out to your admin. They have a couple of options. They can use any of the pre-built system roles. So creators, collaborators, and viewers, or they can create you a specific role. So maybe you only need to collaborate, which means add certain fields, add comments, but maybe you also need to sign documents they can create a new role for you that has all of the functionality as a collaborator, but then come in and say, all right, you are also able to, I'm trying to look for signing very quickly. Well, you get the gist. You can also sign the document. So if it's not working, you can always reach out to your admins to get special permissions because they can create a custom role for you. Now, quick tip for admins, I personally would suggest using custom roles over the system roles because it allows you to be a little bit more flexible, a little bit more specific to the needs of your team, but that's completely up to you. How do I see others and edit their status as an admin? As an admin, when you come into your company settings, you are going to have a list of your users. And then from here, you would highlight their name, you could assign them to a specific role. You could delete the user. You could tell if they had been active or if they haven't accepted their invitation yet. Yeah, excellent. And one quick tip for all of you as well, in case we have any other admins, you can be very, very judicious about how you assign out your roles. When you purchase Concord, you essentially purchase a certain number of seats or a certain number of licenses viewers do not use a seat they do not use a license so if you're inviting your legal team into concord for simply just awareness you only want them to take a look at documents give them viewer access they won't be able to do anything but view but you don't have to pay for them um, so just something to keep in mind that if you do have users who really are just logging in to read contracts take a look at things give them that viewer access and save that seat for somebody who actually needs to be editing and collaborating. Excuse me, just one second. Apologies, folks. I have been shaking a cold for what I feel like is the last 12 years of my life. <laughs> Changing seasons, I suppose. Now, the final option that your admins can create that you will need access to a well as well excuse me is something called teams so what they'll do is create teams and it's essentially the same functionality as a group email so when you have a problem with your computer you email it support at your organization.com and it goes to every single it member and one of them just picks up the ticket this is gonna function the same way. So if you wanna share out a document to the entire customer education team, you can share to the team and it guarantees that it's going to go through all of the appropriate people. Again, your admins are going to set this up, but you will be able to take advantage of sharing documents to these individuals. Teams can only be comprised of internal members. So users that have been invited to Concord by your admin.
All right. So what I'd like to start talking about next is creating new documents and actually drafting things. But any additional questions just on settings or folders or anything that we've discussed up to this point? All right, let's keep going. So what I would like to do is go through the process of starting documents. And we have quite a few ways that you can do this. You can start from a template, you can upload a document, and you can create a blank document. And we're going to go through all of these options. One thing you will definitely understand about me by the end of this class is I am a big fan of templates. If your admins have created a template for you, use it. It is going to make your life so much easier. Because again, rather than having to build out a document from scratch every time you need to send it out, a template is essentially a blueprint that you can just stamp, 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 stamp over and over and over again without having to do much work. So we're going to start from a template first, just so you can see what that looks like. And then we'll go through the process of building out documents and building out templates from scratch. But we'll start with the easy option here so we know that it exists <laughs> before we do some of the harder work. So I'm going to start from a template and I'm going to see a list of templates that I have been shared to. So what I'm going to do is search for a sales agreement. And we're going to grab this sales contract. Now, all of this information is part of the contract summary. You can add this information out front right here, or if we want to wait, we can select create document and we can fill it out later. That's what I'm going to do because I do want to spend quite a bit of time on the summary sheet. So one of the benefits to this template is that we already see that fields have been built in. So that's one less thing that I have to do. If my admin created a template, I can be certain that all of the appropriate language has been built into the document. I also notice that an approval workflow has already been built in. So all of our sales contracts probably require the approval of our CEO. So that's one less thing that I have to remember. And really all I need to do now is add the customer name, the date, and then share it out to my external party. So all of that important work has already been done for me. So if you have access to templates, definitely use them. If you are able to build out templates, definitely take advantage of that because it's gonna save you a lot of time moving forward. Excuse me, just one second. Perfect. So let's actually build out a document. I can show you how to make it a template and we'll go through the process of all of that dynamic functionality. So we're going to come into this draft and sign option again. And what I'm going to do is create a blank document. Now, when you create a blank document, you are using what we refer to as the live editor. So when you hear live editor, you know that there is a lot of editing functionality built in to the editor. So again, I'm going to skip this contract summary information for now. And when you start from scratch, you are really starting from scratch. We're essentially going to be using this as a word processor. So we'll be able to type information in. We're able to add specific fields. We could change the text. We can add images. We can add tables. We can take advantage of the summary information. Everything that we are doing is from zero. Now, probably a more common way to begin a document is to upload a document. So you have the opportunity to upload PDFs or Microsoft Word documents. Now, when you upload a PDF, which is what I'm going to do right now, you're not using the live editor. It's a bit limited. So when you bring in the PDF, you're going to notice immediately that it looks a little bit different. We're still going to have access to this summary information here, still have access to discussion. But when it comes to editing the document, we can insert text fields and we can insert signature fields. We can't edit the text directly. So dynamic negotiation would be a little bit more challenging because it would all have to be done in the discussion panel between myself and any other invitees. 
benefits to PDFs is that if you do not want somebody to be able to edit or change the document, they physically can't. Another added benefit would be formatting. If you have a PDF, the formatting is going to be maintained upon upload. Now, the other option we have here would be Microsoft Document. And when you bring in a Microsoft document, you're going to notice two options, the live document, which is that live editor that we just saw, and then a Word document. A Word mode document, and I have a little bit of a bone to pick with the terminology Word mode because I think it jams up a couple of our customers, uh, reasonably so. But Word mode is essentially meant to keep your formatting as it exists in Word. So when you create a Word document, a lot of our customers just have this absolutely brilliant formatting images, text that is specific to the style of their organization, their brand guide, indentations, bullets, numbering, clauses, so on and so forth. And anytime you bring that into a third party, not even just conquer, the formatting has a tendency to get a little bit skewed. So what this does is maintains formatting. It limits your editing capability to that of a PDF, but your formatting will remain exactly as it existed within Microsoft Word. If you did want to edit the document, it's going to be a lot of downloading, editing in Microsoft Word, and then re-uploading. Now, great option if formatting is of the utmost importance to you. What I want to focus on here is the live editor. And I also want to show you another really cool feature we have. Also, happy International Women's Day to all of my women in the session today. <clears throat> and what I want to show you here is we have a template center. So when you click on the template center, these are just pre-built agreements that you can take advantage of. Now, you might have very specific documents in your language. Oh, and thank you. <laughs> I just saw the same to you in the chat. Uh, you might have very specific language that you need to include in your documents. Absolutely fine. Uh, but if you need a starting point, this is a great option. Additionally, if you need a document to just kind of play around in while you're getting comfortable with Concord, this is a really great option as well. And we're going to use one of these today. So let's find a good one. We will do a purchase order. You click view template and then you download the template. We agree. And there we go. And let me just put this into the chat box in case any of you want to take a look at it. But there's just some really great options. And again, even if you just want some documents to play around in, when I do my demos, I have about 30 different just standard templates that I can use over and over again. So it certainly helps when you want to practice or just get comfortable. So what I'm going to do now is upload that purchase order that we just downloaded. And we're going to use live document live editor because that's where a lot of our dynamic functionality is going to come into play. And again, I just like to use these templates because they have placeholders for a lot of our fields. So it makes it easy for me with my terrible vision to see it. Um, but also it's really just great for practicing and getting comfortable with the platform. So definitely would suggest giving it a whirl. So we have uploaded, whoops, sorry about that. We have uploaded the document and we're going to want to start editing. I'm going to want to start adding fields. I'm going to want to start sharing it out to my third parties. But one thing I would encourage you to do first is change the title. And it's something that I myself forget frequently. I get really invested in building up the contract. I want to go, go, go. But as I showed earlier today, when I was running just a search through all of my documents, I had about 15 documents that were all titled NDA, 15 documents that were all titled lease agreement. So it's very unorganized in my inbox, which is really challenging when I want to start cleaning things up, when I want to start viewing things, when I get that deadline report and it says NDA is up in five days, I'm racking my brain to identify what NDA that is. So I always suggest, and this was probably one of the best piece of advice that I ever got from my colleagues at Concord, who are all very brilliant, but they mentioned have a standard naming convention. And that can look like whatever works for your organization, but a very common one that I have found helpful, other customers have found helpful is identify the type of document 
identify who the document is with. And then I also like to include the date that I expect it to be executed. So if I'm thinking we'll get this wrapped up by March, I'm going to say March 22, 2022, excuse me. This doesn't have to be what you use, but very quickly we can identify a lot of information specific from the title. I've seen people include purchase numbers, purchase order numbers rather, excuse me. Anything that is going to help you identify the document quickly is a good option. And you'll notice that when I built out templates, what I did was just include placeholders. So instead of Maxwell Inc, I typed in company name because that's gonna help my team keep this naming convention consistent, which is ultimately gonna make my life as an admin a lot easier. The second thing that you're gonna to wanna to fill out is the summary. Now this summary information is only going to be visible to internal team members. So that means I am a part of the Phoenix organization. That's my demo account company. So I'm gonna share this out to Jackson at phoenixorganization.com. And I'm gonna give them full editor permissions. This here is a personal message. This would be the templated message that comes with Concord. If I click this settings icon, this is where I can go ahead and use that message template that we had created earlier in the day. So we're inviting Jackson. He is internal. They will be able to see the summary information. If I were to invite an external invitee, they would not see this. So the reason that I really suggest filling out the summary information is Conquer's repository feature is unlimited. So you can store as many documents as you need within Conquer. So that means any documents that you create within Conquer are ultimately going to be saved in your repository indefinitely. And then any uploaded documents. So a lot of you in the session today mentioned that you're brand new to, uh, excuse me, you're brand new to Conquer. So that means you probably still have quite a few live agreements stored elsewhere. You can bring those documents into Concord, take advantage of Concord's functionality, and again, unlimited. So if you want to store 10 documents, if you want to store 10 hundred, completely up to you. But adding this summary information is going to be incredibly helpful because if you move positions within the company, if one of your team members leaves the company, having this summary information is going to help the next person in charge of this contract really understand what's happening. So one of the first things that you want to fill out is the third party. So who is this with? It is with Maxwell. And what kind of company are they? Is there any important information? Did maybe they get a discount because they're friends with the CEO? Anything that you think would be helpful for your team to understand about this document, you can add here. So I'm just gonna say, you know, it's a kayak company in Southern California. Pipe dream for me right now in cold New England. Now, you can also add tags to your document. So depending on the permission that you are given when you start working within Concord, you might be able to simply add tags. You might be able to create tags. If you simply add tags, you're going to pick from this list and select a tag that helps identify this document. The way that you want to think about tags, this is what made it really click for me, is that they are essentially digital post-it notes that are going to group all of your documents together by functionality. So if we were in the office today and we had all of our contracts out on a conference room table, I would go through and tag every customer education contract. I don't really have many contracts come through my way, but let's say that I did. I would tag all of them with a pink sticky note that said customer education. And then later on down the line, I would be able to very quickly find all of the documents under my purview from that pink sticky note. This is going to function the same way. If this here is a purchase order, it's going to fall under sales. So I'm going to tag it with sales. If it's bringing in $250,000, I'm going to tag with $250,000. I'll be able to report off of these tags. I'll also be able to search for these tags. So if I was a sales team member, I would come into Concord, I would type in department sales and all of the contracts that had that tag attached would become visible to me if I was shared to them. Now, the other thing that you wanna be weary of is that if you can create tags, 
So I have the capability to create new tags. And if you hit enter, it becomes a tag that is adopted into that full list of tags. What you want to be mindful of is not creating a duplicate tag. So we have department IT. Let's say I came in here and typed in IT department. This means the exact same thing as the other department IT tag. But what's going to end up happening is 50% of your team will use the department IT tag, 50% will use the IT department tag. So folks are going to essentially have two tags meaning the same thing. So the reports and the searches that we run aren't going to be all encompassing of our IT documents. So just be very mindful of duplicate tags as you start tagging your documents. Now, the other opportunity you have is, of course, to choose where you want this to be stored. By default, it's your personal folder, unless you start from a template that existed in a folder. If you start from a template that existed in a folder, that new document would automatically end up in that same folder. This I did not create from a folder, did not create from a template, so automatically goes to personal. I can add it to any folder that I am shared to. I'm just going to keep it in personal for now, though. You can also link to another document. So if this purchase order was maybe part of a larger sales agreement with the Maxwell Incorporation, I might say, you know, this is linked to the sales agreement with Maxwell. We can add multiple links. And when I run a search here for a specific document, I am only going to be able to attach or link documents that I am shared to. So I wouldn't be able to grab a document. Oops, did I just get kicked offline? Can you guys hear me? Okay, perfect, sorry. I had a couple other windows closed out, so I got nervous. It is very, very windy here. So if I do, for whatever reason, lose Wi-Fi, um, hang tight, I will come back on. Or if you hear a tree fall through my window, which is also possible. All right, sorry about that. So I am only gonna be able to see documents that I am shared to, which is very important because let's say I link this document I also have Jason, excuse me, Jackson, <laughs> who is an internal team member as well. Now, if Jackson is shared to this Acme vendor agreement, they will be able to click on it, open it, see it, great. If they are not shared to that document, they'll be able to see the title. So they'll be able to understand that this is linked to a secondary document, but when they click on it, it'll just take them to an error page. So. Long story short, permissions are going to be respected above all else, which is very important in terms of contract management because typically there's a lot of very sensitive information. So once we fill all of this information out, we want to fill out the life cycle because this life cycle information is going to drive all of our notifications, all of our deadlines, all of our reminders moving forward. So it's going to be signed once we request signatures and our signatories sign the document. And then that date will be populated automatically. But we can say it's valid for a period of, for an unknown duration. We're going to say it's valid for two years. We can add an effective date. So let's say we agree that this will be effective on March 31st. You can add a renewal period and you can add a notification of non renewal. So I'm going to save this information here. We're going to get quite a bit of information in the summary. We can come back in and edit this at any time if needed. Now, the other option we have is smart fields, and we'll talk about those in just a bit, but other fields. So what does this mean? When we think of our summary information, these options up at the very top are standard. So with description, tags, any other documents that it's linked to. So that comes standard with your contract, but there might be information that is very important for you to gather that is not native to the summary. So if that information doesn't exist, but you want to add it, you can create your own field. So maybe we say, you know, company phone number. And then we can come in here and add the field value. And we'll say, you know, one, 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 one
This now is going to be stored indefinitely. We can add another field. Maybe we want to know the company size, how many employees they have, because when we re-up their agreement in two years, we want to be able to see if maybe we can extend their contract. Company size. Now we'll say it's 150 employees. So you can add any other information that you think is necessary. It's going to be saved indefinitely with the summary. Summary exists as long as the contract exists within Concord. You can also add clauses. So these are specific clauses. So it might be a date-based clause, might be a financial clause. So let's say for whatever reason, you know, this particular company wants to do a monthly payment. I'm going to say we are doing a monthly payment for two years. So we're going to add a duration frequency and we're going to say it is recurring. We're going to say we're repeating this every month. And we want to say the reoccurrence starts at the start of the contract, which for us is going to be March 31st. And we're going to say it ends after that two year period. And we're going to add a financial amount. And we're going to say to be paid, we'll say it's $200 in American dollars, and we'll say before tax. So now I'm going to get a notification in my inbox every month that $200 is meant to be collected from the Maxwell Incorporation. So summary information does take a bit of time to fill out, as we can see here, but it exists indefinitely with the contract and it provides us with so much information. All right, so now what I'm going to want to start doing is setting up this contract to be able to share it out with external team members. So I want to start thinking about, well, what information do I need to collect from external team members? What do I want them to be able to see? Do I want them to be able to edit information? So I'm going to get rid of this quick tutorial. And what I'm going to start doing is adding fields. So I'm going to come into my fields option, and I'm going to take advantage of the short answer, and we're going to say company name. You can make it fillable by a specified signatory, somebody from your company, an external guest, anyone, which is what I'm going to use for right now. And you can also make it required. Required means it must be completed before the document is executed. So I'm going to hit save. And then we're just going to drag and drop it into the appropriate location. I'm going to do the same thing here for company address. And we could continue to do it with company phone. I won't make you go through the entire process with me. I'm sure you get the idea here. And now these become fillable fields, so information that is meant to be collected. And we could also fill in information here. You know, we can add fields all over the document. If we wanted to, we could also add images. We could edit the text. We have quite a number of different fields that you are able to add. So signature fields, if potentially I wanted my third party to sign after our description of items here. I can set up a signature field. I can also use smart fields. So smart fields are going to be admin generated. They are predetermined fields, predefined fields that your admins create that you are able to add to your documents. Now, another benefit is that they are dynamic. So let's say here, I add the smart field of actual cost. And we're going to put it here. Yep, where did my smart field go? Must have gotten a little bit too click happy there. Smart field, actual cost. There we go. And then let's also say that we want to include the actual cost again down here. We've probably all had to fill out contracts where we're consistently typing in the same information over and over and over again, such as name, date, company name, phone number, what have you. It can get pretty frustrating. So the smart fields are very helpful because rather than me having to create it from scratch, they already exist for me thanks to my admins. The other added benefit is that when I type information into the smart field once, it immediately becomes populated in any other smart fields of the same name. 
So very helpful in terms of things such as name, date, company name. So that way your customers, your clients don't have to fill that out more than once. All right, so I'm gonna hit save. We are thinking we have all of the fields that we need in, the contract looks great. I'm gonna go ahead and share it out with an external team member. So we're gonna share this out with Sarah at maxwellinc.com. And what permissions do we want to give them? Do we just want this person to be able to view the document? Do we want her to be able to fill in specific fields? Or do we want her to edit the entire document? If I want her to add edits and make changes to the document so we can really negotiate, I'm going to give her editor permissions. And I'm going to give her a specific set of instructions. And we're going to hit send. Now, because I did give this person editor permissions, this person can come in and make edits. So they could come in and say, I'm going to change the price of this to 35 cents as opposed to a dollar, what have you. And as soon as they hit save, it's added to the contract. Now, that's great. Very unlikely that a customer would do that, at least I hope. <laughs> but what if we want to have a little bit more control over the edits that they make? you absolutely have the opportunity to do that. The first thing that we can do is view the version history. So this comes back to the question that was asked a little bit earlier in the session today. Um, somebody had asked, how many versions do I have? How many times can I export it? And I mentioned anytime a save is made, a new version is created. So we've only been working in this document for about 10 minutes maybe, and we already have five versions. So if I wanted to revert back to the first version that existed, I'm going to click that version and we're going to select restore or export if I want to download it. You can also show changes. So right now I'm saying show me changes with the highlighted document and then version five or version four. And it will show you in that light blue color what has happened from version one to four or one to five. Now that's great. I like being able to restore former versions, but I don't necessarily want to do that every time an edit has been made that I don't agree with. Especially maybe we have more than three people working on this document. That'd be very hard to manage very quickly. So one of the other options you have, and I suggest turning this on always, is track changes. So when you're in edit mode, you can come to revisions and select track changes. Now that track changes is enabled, if somebody tries to make a change, you as the creator or one of your internal collaborators, so for us that would be Jackson, can approve or decline that particular edit. So if they came in and said, you know what, let's make it 25 cents per unit, what's going to happen is it's highlighting all of the changes that have been made. I click this icon on the right hand side and say I either approve the change or we can decline the change. If you decline the change, nothing happens. If you approve it, it's adopted into the contract. So it gives you a lot of awareness into edits that have been made, but it still allows you to say, yeah, no, we're not gonna do that. <laughs> so it gives you a bit of a safety in case somebody maybe goes a little bit uh, too far with their editing. Now, a couple of other things that I'd like to talk about just in terms of collaboration functionality. Of course, there's filling out appropriate fields, but we also have the opportunity to add comments. So anyone with editing capabilities on the document could come in and highlight text and then comment. So I might say, I thought we had agreed on 25 per unit. Now, every time you add a comment or a discussion, it's going to either be addressed publicly or internally. Public means everybody shared to the document can view. Internal means only internal team members. So users, your admin has added to Concord. So for me, that would be myself and Jackson and Sarah would not be able to view internal. If it's public, we can all see it. Now I stress this because once it's posted, it cannot be changed. So if you make something public, you can't change it to internal. Additionally, you can't edit the text. So just be very judicious about your audience and what you're saying because you can resolve the comments but your comments are always going to be tracked in your audit so you have your audit trail of actions that have been taken within the document but you also have a comment audit so 
your external members can see the comment audit in terms of document, excuse me, in terms of comments that have been made public. So even though it's hidden, it, it's still there. So just be very mindful about your audience and what you're saying. This is intentional. A lot of people are confused. Well, why can't I edit it? Why can't I delete it? And the reason is it's going to help you in the long run if we have a reference to all of this information. Because if your customer comes back to you and says, hey, I brought up to you that we said 20 cents a unit as opposed to 25 cents a unit and you agreed, you can say, actually, we didn't. On March 8th, you know, I responded to your comment and we agreed on 25. So all of that information will be indefinitely stored to help you just in case. Your discussions are going to function the same way. You can write a message publicly or internally. But when you think about comments, you want to think about those as more line or text specific thoughts, questions. Discussions are going to be more all encompassing of the document. So if you have questions on the dates, if you have questions on the company email, for whatever reason, you could add that here. So I might say, hey, we want to get this wrapped up by Friday. So if you could please add all of your edits by Friday, end of day. Now, public and internal again. It's going to be indefinitely kept, can't make edits, but when you post a message, it's going to send an email to everyone involved. So because it's public, all of us would receive an email that Shannon just put in a message and spelled Friday wrong. If we did internal, it would just go to myself and Jason. But that message is very helpful in terms of showcasing in the email because your third parties probably aren't logging into Concord every day. So they're coming in and making their edits and then probably keeping it out of sight, out of mind. So if you post that message that says, please make your final edits by Friday, I'm gonna request signatures Friday, end of day, then they're gonna say, oh, I'm gonna go in, check, make my final edits and we'll be good to go. Any questions on fields or smart fields or edits, revisions? I know we've kind of talked about a bit in the last 30 minutes or so. Can PDF files use approvals as well? They can. When we talk about approvals in just a few minutes, there are two types, company and customs, uh, excuse me, company and custom. Uh, so you will be able to use company approvals. You will not be able to use conditional custom approvals with PDFs. And we'll go over those in just a few minutes to differentiate between the options. Great question. All right, perfect. So one final thing here I just want to mention, you can attach files to the document as well. So if you needed to attach, you know, a insurance agreement, a photo, anything, you can attach. And when I say anything, it is any file type. I did not believe the developers when they told me that. I tested it for like an hour straight one day, and it is any file. And I had some very abstract files that I tested. Anybody who has access to the document can download this attachment. So even viewers would be able to download the attachment as well. So it is very accessible to all who have access. All right, that being said, we still have quite a bit. We're gonna talk about approvals and then e-signature. Um, so I'm gonna offer us just a quick 10 minute break so we can maybe get up, stretch, grab a cup of coffee if you'd like, uh, and then we will close out with approvals and e-signature. Does that work for you guys? All right, perfect. I'm just gonna put up a quick 10 minute timer and then I will see you all back soon.
All righty, welcome back everybody. Any questions before we move on to approvals? Perfect, all right. So there are gonna be times where you potentially need to obtain the approval of your internal team members prior to moving forward with executing the agreement. And if that is the case, there are two methods when you use the live editor for doing so. So I'm gonna select set an approval here and we're gonna have the company approvals and we're gonna have custom approvals. Now to answer that question that was just asked about using approvals within PDFs, you can use custom approvals, excuse me, you can use company approvals within your documents. You can also use a custom approval that is simply a mandatory step. So let's take a look at the company approvals first. So these are pre-built approvals that your admins create for you that you can attach to any contract. They have a name, they have a description. If you click into the approval, you're able to see who the approver or approver is. Now, one of the benefits to this is you don't have to build it out from scratch. Your admins have built it out. The second is your admins probably had a very specific reason for including the approvers that they included on the document. Additionally, it's very easy to add. For all sales, I'm just gonna say this is our sales save. We're good to go. Now, one thing I wanna ask is a lot of these company approvals have these qualifiers that mention this is required for all sales agreements. This is required for all NDAs. This is required for all leases. Now. I have to manually come in and put this into my document. Can anybody think of a way that we could guarantee that this lease approval ended up in all of our leases? Comes back to one of my favorite features here at Concord. we could add this approval to a template. So that way, anytime that somebody were to use a template, this approval would already be built in. So once we add an approval to our document, we have the opportunity to select two options. We can say automatically notify the next approver when a step is complete, which means as soon as the first step approves the document, a email gets kicked off to the second, and we can also say allow external guests to sign at any time, which means we can have our external signatories sign prior to approval from our internal employees. Once we hit save, what we need to do is then request the approval. Oops, let me go back to one that doesn't have just me. There we go. So now what we need to do is request the approval. So we do have to manually kick off that first request. So I'm gonna select request. You can also use this drop down to request with a message. So if you wanted to say, hi, Jason, we are requesting your approval. If you have any questions, please put them in the discussion panel. We hit send. One thing you're going to immediately notice is that as soon as we request the approval of somebody, if they hadn't been added to the document, they will be added to the document once we request their approval. Because we can't expect somebody to approve a document that they don't have access to. So even if we had forgotten to add them first, once we request their approval, they're automatically added to the document. They are then able to come in and approve or reject. Because I am an approver, I can also approve or reject. Now I'm gonna take away this company approval because I would like to show you custom approvals. So custom approvals have two types of steps. We have mandatory and we have conditional. Mandatory means no matter what happens, we are going to need to get approval from 
a specific team, a specific individual. So let's say Jason and Shannon. And then when you select more than one person or a team and a person, anytime there are more than two approvers, excuse me, more than one approver, you have to choose any or all. So anyone means either of us can approve and we can move forward. Everyone means both of us, all of us have to approve before moving forward. We can then come in, add another mandatory step if we needed to, and we could continue for as long as we needed. The other opportunity we have is to add a conditional approval. Now, these are not available within PDFs because PDFs does not support smart fields. So smart fields are dynamic in the sense that they auto populate other fields of the same name, but they also help us run our custom approvals. So I could say if a smart field is a specific value, we have actual cost already built into the document. So that's the option I'm going to use. And I'm going to say if the actual cost is greater than or equal to 1500, then I need to get approval from Jason. And then let's save. So what we're immediately going to notice is there's no indication here that an approval hasn't been met. And that's because we don't have an approval established because we haven't met the conditions that would require this approval. But watch what happens when I come in and add in an actual cost that is greater than 1500 so we'll say 2500 we'll hit save and then immediately we're going to see that okay now we have to request that approval so i would follow that same process request with message or simply just request with the default message with concord and now we would need to wait for jason's approval we cannot move forward with signature we cannot sign the document until jason's approval is met Questions on company approvals, custom approvals, or those conditional approvals with smart fields. Cool. All right. Let's talk about e-signature. So you may have remembered that when we started this document, we had the opportunity to populate a good portion of the summary information right out front. So before the document was even uploaded. Now, one of those functions was our signers. So you can establish your signers at any time. So when you're establishing a signer, we're not requesting their signature. We're just saying, ultimately, I want you, you, and you to sign the document. Um, approval. Once it's approved, will an email or message be received to alert? Yes. So whoever you are requesting the approval from will receive an email. Uh, and then once it's approved, will an email or message? Oh, I'm sorry. I read that backwards. So yes, the person who is expected to approve will, of course, receive a notification that they are asked to approve. And then you would define your notifications and your personal settings. So if you did want and approve, uh, excuse me, an email every time an approval had been made, you would just want to say, I want a singular email anytime an approval is completed by a colleague. <laughs> excuse me, sorry, didn't get to the mute button just in time. <laughs> Apologies. Sorry about that. So you can set up your signatories at any time. So when you set up your signatures, you're going to go to signature, configure signatures, and add who you would like to ultimately sign the document. Excuse me, just one moment. Sorry about that. So we can add placeholders essentially and say any external guest, any internal user, or anybody that is added to the document can sign. Or we can add specific names. So I'm going to add myself. And I'm also going to add Jackson from the Maxwell Company. Now, what you're noticing is that I can't request signatures. 
So I'm able to add signatures, which means, excuse me, able to add signatories, which means I'm establishing who I expect to be signing the document. This also allows me to assign a specific field to a signatory now that they have been added. I can also take advantage of that signature field specifically and say that I'm required to sign here. Maybe I'm also required to sign here or Jackson is required to sign. So that signature field based on a specific portion of the contract, but I can't request the signatures. There are three things that would bar you from requesting signatures. The first of which is would be if we had an unmet approval. So these people are actually fake. So we'd be waiting quite a bit of time <laughs> to get their approval. So I'm going to delete it. But if these were real individuals, not in a demo account, we would of course wait. Second thing that would bar us from moving forward to requesting signatures would be if any of these fields were required and incomplete. The last would be if we had any unresolved edits. So that means if somebody came in and made a change and we did not either approve or decline that change. So let's accept all of our edits or reject all of our edits and fill in this required field. Now you're gonna realize that I can request signatures. So this means I can come in, select request signatures. It's going to lock editing mode and take us into the signing phase. Editing is locked because we shouldn't be editing the document when we're ready to sign. If we did realize, oops, you know what? I meant to edit this. I forgot to add specific information. You can always return to review. When you return to review, signing is locked and editing is now available. We'd make our appropriate edits. We'd request signatures. Now, if you are a signatory, you can select sign and it's gonna bring a signature pop-up modal and you're going to be required to fill out your name. Now I use Concord regularly, of course. So my name and job function are already associated with my email. If this is the first time that you are working with somebody in Concord, they will be required to add their name. And if they would like to, they can add their job title. Once they add this information once and sign, it's automatically captured. So if you have to execute any additional contracts with these individuals, this information will populate automatically based on their email. They can then come in and draw. So we could say Jackson. Some people really hate this drawing tool. Um, I like it. <laughs> I think it's always fun when you can draw your signature on platforms. Or you can type it in. Both of them are legally binding. And then you can go ahead and hit sign. So once I've signed the document, it populates all of my signature areas. And then down at the bottom, it says that I signed on March 3rd, 2022. Now, let's say that I signed the document, but some of our external parties are saying, no, 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 we still need to make edits. Can you return to review? You can. What would we have to do? We would have to cancel all signatures. So that means everyone who had signed would have to re-sign after we made the appropriate edits. So we'd have to re-request and then re-sign. So we want to avoid that if we can. A couple other options we have here is delegating signatures. So if I wasn't actually meant to sign this document, I could say, it's not actually gonna be me, it's gonna be my CEO. And then anything that I am responsible for filling out in fields, anything that I am responsible for signing will now be designated to this person. My external signatories can also do this. So maybe we had been working with Jackson, but ultimately his CEO, Maxwell of the Maxwell organization is gonna be responsible for signing. He could come in and say, actually, it's gonna be Maxwell at maxwell.com. And then every field that Jackson had been initially assigned is going to now be assigned to Maxwell. Now let's also say here that for whatever reason, the Maxwell Incorporation is just not comfortable with e-signature. One thing I would suggest is sending them this information. Again, e-signature is still fairly new to some individuals, some companies, so they might not be comfortable with it. I would share this with them. It is a legally binding e-signature. It is indefinitely valid. 
this might be able to come any fears that folks new to e-signature and CLMs might have. Um, instead of type, draw can be imported a picture file type to allow. You wouldn't be able to import a signature. No, you'd have to draw it out. So I know like Max, you can have like a, a signature saved that you can kind of plop into certain things. Um, you could add that image, but it, it's not part of the signature process. So they would still need to go through the act of signing through Concord for it to be binding, legally binding. The benefit is though, is that once you sign in one location, it auto populates the rest of your signatures. So they don't need to do it more than once. So let's say here that Jackson, the Maxwell Inc says, nope, we are gonna do pen and paper signature, end of list. We can say, okay, yeah, that's fine. I'm gonna sign pen and paper too. You're gonna sign pen and paper, great. I could delete this document, but I certainly don't want to because it has summary information. It's going to remind me about deadlines. We have discussions. We have our approvals. We have the whole audit. All of the work that we have done has been tracked here. So what could I do? I don't want this listed indefinitely in review because I certainly want to be able to report off of signed documents effectively. You can finalize signing. If you finalize signing, it is going to be marked as a signed document. Can't be undone. So once it has been finalized, what would I want to do with that actual signed copy? So that wet signature copy. Any thoughts on what I could do? First, I could upload and link. Second, I could attach, because we're certainly going to want those documents linked to one another, but we want to keep this in Concord because it has all of our edits. Um, for signatures, do you integrate with DocuSign? We do. It is a single direction integration. So you could edit, negotiate in Concord, and then sign in DocuSign. Um, typically, you wouldn't need to do that. The Concord signature process is also legally binding. Um, but if you did, for whatever reason, it is single direction. So we could export to DocuSign, but not DocuSign back to Concord. So you would sign a DocuSign and then finalize your document here. Yeah, great question. I know that I think there's like one area of the world that DocuSign is kind of the only platform that allows e-signature there. Um, but if you take a look here, we're pretty all-encompassing, but, but certainly something to look into if that was a concern. Excellent. So now that this is signed, it's stored in our repository indefinitely. We can search for it. We can run filters. We can run reports. Oh, excellent. Yeah, so certainly share that page. And then if, if you still have additional questions, feel free to reach out to me. Um, I certainly am not the person who's able to answer the legal questions, uh, but I can certainly put you into contact with somebody who can. Excellent. So the last thing that I wanna show you here before we close out is storing signed contracts. So a lot of you in the session today mentioned that you're brand new to the platform, which means you have contracts that were executed elsewhere. So you can upload those and store them in Concord. So you can bring in PDFs or Word docs. You can add additional information. What you can't do is edit the document, of course, because it's already been signed. So what you're able to do is still add summary information. You're still able to add a duration. You're still able to add other fields. So if you signed this document two months before signing on with Concord, 
this is probably still valid. So you can say, I signed this contract with the carousel, which is actually where we had my daughter's birthday. <laughs> I forgot that I had this stored on my desktop. We say we signed it in December and it's for a period of one year. So we add that information and we're going to be reminded about contracts that we signed outside of Concord. So essentially you're able to take advantage of Concord's functionality, even if you had executed your document prior to using Concord. And again, the repository is indefinite. So you can go ahead and save all of your documents within Concord to run searches, to take advantage of that duration. Now, if you are not an admin, you can upload signed contracts on a case-by-case -case basis. If you are an admin, you can do a bulk upload. And if you are not an admin, I would certainly suggest reaching out to your team in terms of bulk uploading, because what you'd be able to do is upload multiple documents at once. And what I typically suggest is separating your documents out on your desktop. So I have all my NDAs and all my lease agreements and then bring it into Concord by type. Because what you're able to do, oh, sorry, I didn't compress the file. Let me do that real quick. Zip it, there we go. Because now what I'm able to do is grab that zipped file. Oh, there we go, documents. Whew, where's my brain today? And then add my lease agreements to my particular sales folder, and then I can tag. So all of these documents end up in the appropriate folder. All of these documents are tagged. I start the upload. Um, any storage space for file storing? Any storage space size? I don't think, but let me actually just double check. I'm 99% sure no, but one second. I'm just going to reach out to the, the support team just to confirm because I don't want to give you the wrong information. Um, but once this is finished uploading, all of those documents will exist happily in your repository. All right, so they should get back to me pretty soon on that. If they don't, I'll certainly just email you um, after the session once I find it out. All right, well, that's all I got for you, but I do have just a couple quick things for you. Um, and then, of course, I'm happy to stay on and answer any questions that you folks may have. But let me grab a couple of resources for you. So the first is essentially just a resource guide for this class. And let me show you what that looks like. Okay. Um, it's just essentially documentation of everything that we covered today. So you are more than welcome to share this with your team. It has some prompts at the end if you want to practice. So this is for you, for you to keep just kind of a nice review of everything that we have covered today, if it's something you're interested in. So I'm going to include this in the email that I sent out to you, but I'm also going to just put it in the chat box now. And then the final thing that I have for you before we kind of just open up to questions, it's just a feedback form. Um, let's me know what you think of the class. Let's me know what you think of me. Let's me know what additional content you would like to see. 
Um, I take it very seriously. So any feedback you have for me, any feedback you have for Concord, we love to hear it. Um, just a really quick form, if you don't mind filling it out, mean a lot to us. And then of course, if you have questions, I'm happy to stay on and answer those. If you are all conquered out, which is also more than fair, we've been at it for two hours, uh, you are more than welcome to hop off. I do want to say before you do hop off, thank you so much. I know it is a lot of time to give up out of your day. So thank you for trusting me with these two hours. Hopefully you were able to pull some value from the session. And I do hope to see you in future webinars down the line. And again, if you got to hop off, hop off. If you have questions, I would love to answer them. Hi, I have a question. This is Irene. I, I don't mind if, if you don't mind if I talk, right? Because of course, no, not at all. <laughs> um, so one of the concerns with um, my company was uh, about the signatures. We currently use DocuSign to sign um, all of the agreements and, and so forth. Uh, however, we would like to centralize it and use Concord as our one base. Mm -hmm. And I understand that you have um, signatures available, as you have shown. Uh, however, uh, I'm I'm just not quite sure uh, how it will work if we do decide to still sign with DocuSign, but use Concord as our um, contract system. Mm -hmm. so, um yeah. So I don't have the integration set up. We don't have a DocuSign account, but essentially what it would look like is, let me just go into a document here. We'll use this one. What you would do is edit in Concord. So you'd obtain all of the information. You'd have your discussions, you'd have your summary, and then you would export to DocuSign. Mm, okay. So when you brought it into DocuSign, essentially all of the appropriate information would be obtained from the editing that you had done in Concord, but then you would just sign in DocuSign. So you would sign internally and then you would have to request your um, external invitee signature through DocuSign as well. And then the document would be fully executed in DocuSign. So you would just want to make sure you come back into Concord and just finalize the document. So that way it's not listed as in review. Would I have to upload it again or it will somehow integrate it? I would suggest either uploading it back into Concord or attaching a copy of the DocuSign mm -hmm. version into this document. So that way they're linked together. Mm -hmm. um, but the Concord DocuSign integration is just one way so that would mean we can push out to Concord, but DocuSign doesn't push back to us. Got it. Okay. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Just an extra step. I'm just trying to yeah, figure out. Unfortunately. <laughs> yeah, that's okay. Thank you so much. Yeah, great question. Any other questions I can answer for you? All righty. Well, thank you all so much for joining. Definitely feel free to reach out if you have any questions. Otherwise, I hope you have a great rest of the day and week, and I will be talking to you soon. All righty. Have a good one, everybody. Thanks again. Yes, I will share the recording. I'll email the recording to you as well as the slide deck and that resource guide. Mm -hmm. Yeah, absolutely. All right. Have a good one, everybody.